Hello everyone, I'm Julia, and today I'm going to talk to you about how services can learn aggregate statistics about their users without invading the individual privacy of their users. And in particular, I'm going to focus on a system called Rapport that was deployed by Google recently. Um, so the ideas I'm going to talk about can be generalized beyond Rapport, but I'll present them in the context of Rapport. And this was joint work with my collaborators at Google, Vasil Pihur and uh, Ulvar Erlingsson. Okay, so many of you have probably heard about the recent announcements from Google and more recently Apple about how they're launching programs to collect user data with uh, differential privacy guarantees. The idea here is that they want to learn some aggregate statistics about their user base without learning individual users' data. And we, while we don't know that much about what exactly Apple is doing, in the case of Google, the setup looks something like this. You have a collection of users and an aggregator, so in this case, Google. And these users have some data that's of interest to the aggregator. So for example, that data might be the default browser homepage for each user. And so the aggregator is interested in learning some population level statistics, like the distribution of, these, of this data, um, without learning individual users' data elements. So the idea here is that each user will add some statistical noise to their data in such a way that uh, the noise masks the underlying data piece. So they'll generate some randomness and then send these randomized reports to the aggregator. And the aggregator will then apply some post-processing to these reports and extract the desired information. So in this case, a distribution over the underlying strings. Okay. So notice here that there are kind of two main components in this pipeline. The first is the data randomization phase. And this is choosing how to add noise to your data and how much of that noise to add. And the second phase is actually extracting uh, useful statistics from that noisy data. So in this talk, I'm going to focus mainly on phase two. So given a fixed data randomization scheme, how can we increase the utility of this pipeline? And as I mentioned earlier, in particular, I'm going to focus on the system called Rapport, which was recently deployed in Chrome. Um, and the idea here is for their data randomization phase, they have a differentially private mechanism for uh, randomizing string valued random variables. And in the second phase, the original Rapport paper proposes a decoding mechanism that allows you to learn marginal distributions over these strings. Um, now, there are two main problems with rapport in its current state. The first problem is that you can't estimate joint distributions. So for example, if I want to learn the joint distribution of users' home pages and also the plugins that they have installed, uh, the current decoding mechanism just doesn't work. It it'll give you the wrong distribution. Um, but this is problematic because oftentimes uh, it's the co-occurrence of data that is indicative of something interesting, like the emergence of malware. And the second problem is that in order for the current decoding mechanism to work, you have to know the underlying dictionary of possible strings. So for example, if I'm trying to learn a distribution of plugins, I need to have a list of every possible plugin that um, could be in my user's data set. And that's going to be challenging because oftentimes these data sets are changing over time, people are building new plugins and so forth. So in this paper, um, we tackled these, both of these problems. So in the first part, we, pr we present a toolbox for estimating joint distributions over variables that are collected using the rapport mechanism. And we use the expectation maximization algorithm to do this. And we also have a few other statistical tests which I won't talk about today for the sake of time. And in part two, we propose an algorithm for estimating distributions when you don't know the underlying data dictionary. And the intuition for how we do this is by first splitting the strings of interest into n-grams, or shorter substrings. And this is useful because we can enumerate every possible n-gram as long as it's short enough, and that's still computationally feasible. And so then with these shorter substrings, we can learn the joint distribution between these substrings using the toolbox from part one. And once we have these joint distributions, we can then back out a data dictionary. Okay, so let's get started with part one, estimating joint distributions. 
So just to be perfectly clear here, the, the problem is you once again have these users and the aggregator, but now the users might have multiple uh, pieces of data. So, so here we have a home page and let's say the last plugin that each user installed. And each user is going to independently randomize both of these pieces of data using the rapport mechanism, just as black box as it is, and send those randomized reports to the aggregator. And now the aggregator wants to apply some post-processing to these noisy reports and recover the joint distribution of both variables, or an arbitrary number of variables. Okay? And so the challenge here is designing that post-processing algorithm. What should we do in order to learn that joint distribution? So as I mentioned, our approach for dealing with this is using the expectation max maximization algorithm, or the EM algorithm. And this is commonly used to learn parameters in cases where you have latent variables. In this case, the latent variables are the ground truth, so each user's um, home page and the last plugin that they installed. We don't get to observe those. We only observe a noisy version of that. Um, so the way this works is we can write out the uh, this posterior probability that's shown up above. And here, the x and y are our ground truth, which are unobserved. Um, x prime and y prime are the noisy reports that are observed by the aggregator. And the pij parameters are the values of the contingency table, or the joint distribution, which is what we're trying to estimate. And notice that the quantity inside this box can be computed exactly using the rapport system parameters and the observed data. So if we knew these PIJs, we could write this posterior probability exactly. But we don't. So what we're going to do is use a current estimate of the PIJs. We'll call it PIJ hat. And uh, estimate the value of this posterior probability. That's the first step of the algorithm. Then in the second step, we update our estimate of the joint distribution by averaging over all of the data points. Okay. And, um, and notice that the argument of this summation is just what we calculated in the first step. Okay, and you can repeat this until convergence. And th the details of this aren't too important, but the point is it's, it's pretty easy to show that this algorithm converges to the maximum likelihood estimate of our joint distribution. And furthermore, that estimate is asymptotically unbiased. So we have some theoretical guarantees that this estimator is giving us a good approximation of our uh, true joint distribution. All right, so now we can use this for the second part of the problem, which is learning unknown dictionaries. Here, the problem is we have this distribution that we're trying to learn, but the aggregator doesn't know which strings are in the data dictionary. Okay? And as I mentioned earlier, if that's the case, the current decoding mechanism in the original report paper just fails. It gives you the wrong distribution. Um, so the approach that we use to solve this, solve this issue is to divide strings into substrings, or n-grams. So here, for example, I've divided the string into bigrams, or substrings of length two. Now, what each user is going to do is start with its original string. So for example, for user one, the original string is rabbit. And then it's going to choose uniformly at random uh, two of the n-grams from its string. So user one chose n-grams one and three, which correspond to strings ra and it. Okay, and similarly for all the rest of the users. Now these users are going to randomize each of these three strings, um, the rabbit, ra, and it. And they're, also, and they're going to send those to the aggregator, along with the indices of the substrings, or of the n-grams that they chose. Okay? And those indices are sent in plain text. All right, and for those of you who are familiar with differential privacy, we still need to maintain or come within our uh, privacy budget of epsilon. And so we dealt with that by just splitting the privacy budget evenly among these three uh, strings that each user is sending to, to the adversary. All right, so, not adversary, aggregator, sorry. <laughs> um, okay, so now the aggregator has from each user a noisy report of the user's full string uh, and two noisy reports from each substring along with the index of that substring. All right, so what do they do? Well, the first thing that the aggregator is going to do is to split up the data set um, 
into users that reported the same pair of n-grams. So for example, in our case, uh, we said that the length of the string was six, so there are three possible pairs of n-grams. n-grams one and two, two and three, and one and three. Now, for each group of users that um, is reporting the same pair of n-grams, the, ad the aggregator is going to compute the joint distribution between those n-grams. So here, for example, for uh, n-grams one and two, uh, here we have a joint distribution which places probability mass at the co-occurrence of R-A-B-B, which was the first four letters of rabbit, one of the strings in our dictionary, and um, H-E-R-M, which was the first four letters of hermit, which was the other string in our dictionary. And notice here that it also places some mass at H-E-B-B, which was not any of the strings in our dictionary, but this can happen because of the noise. Okay. All right, and it does this for each uh, pairing of n-grams. All right, so now that we've computed these joint distributions, which was all using the, the tools from part one, um, we can enumerate the list of possible strings that could have led to these joint distributions. So we do this by writing down the n-grams that were learned for each index, bigrams one, two, and three. And we can think of these bigrams as nodes in a graph, where the edges represent co-occurrence. So for example, uh, we know from the joint distribution of n-grams one and two that R-A-B-B, H-E-B-B, and H-E-R-M all have co-occurrence. So we can draw those three arrows. And the same for bigrams two and three, and one and three. All right, so now we're trying to, recall we're trying to find the set of candidate strings, and we can do this by um, searching for cliques in this graph. In particular, notice that this graph is now a k-partite graph, where the partitions are generated by the index of your bigram, of, yeah, of your bigram. And so we can do some kind, you can use whatever algorithm you want, but we want to find cliques of size k within this graph. And if we do this on this particular graph, we can get out the strings rabbit, hermit, and habit. And of course, one of these does not belong. So now what do we do? Now we can consider these strings as our data dictionary, which we previously didn't have. Um, and recall, we still haven't used those full string reports that each user sent, where they randomized the, the, the full string, rabbit or hermit. Um, so using just the regular rapport decoding mechanism that was already proposed in the original paper, you can use this learned dictionary to hopefully recover the desired distribution. Okay. So the question then is how, how well does this work? And the answer, as you might expect, is it depends on a number of system parameters. Um, these include what kind, of what kind of distribution are you trying to estimate, how many users do you have, what privacy parameters do you have, um, a bunch of different things. Um, but in general, we found that uh, this approach is pretty good for identifying the heavy hitters in a distribution. So if you have a very skewed distribution, it will identify the strings that carry most of the weight. However, as I'll show you in just a second, there are some problems here. So here I'm showing you a plot of the Hellinger distance uh, between the true distribution and the learned distribution for some simulations that we ran. <laughs> Um, where the underlying distribution here is a power law distribution. So it is skewed, most of the mass is uh, represented by a few strings, but you do also have a, a heavy tail. Okay. And, these, and this is shown as a function of the number of reports or the number of users. And these different, uh, these different lines are representing different privacy parameters. So this line on the far right, the darkest purple line, represents a privacy parameter of epsilon 1.5. So that's the highest privacy that we considered. And notice that you have to have at least 100,000 users or, or reports in order to get reasonable accuracy here. So um, this is a little bit concerning. I mean, that's totally fine for a company like Google, but if you want to extend these kinds of tools to startups or smaller companies, uh, this starts to become challenging potentially. So the main question we want to answer is what, what is the source of error? And there are kind of two possibilities here. One is that we're not learning the dictionary well enough. Um, so we're just learning a subset of this possible strings in our data dictionary. And the other possibility is that we're learning the right strings, 
but we're learning the wrong distribution over those strings. And for the sake of time, I won't show plots for this, but it turns out that the answer is that we're not learning enough strings. We're only learning the heavy hitters of this distribution. And this is happening because there's a lot of noise in uh, estimating those joint distributions between the n-grams. So just to wrap up, um, I presented to you some tools for learning uh, joint distributions between variables in their rapport mechanism. And we also proposed a mechanism for learning distributions when you don't know the underlying data dictionary, uh, which seems to work pretty well for certain classes of distributions, but there's still a lot of gaps and a lot of room for improvement. Um, so if you're interested, uh, we have, or Google has published the code on GitHub, and it's a pretty transparent project. Um, so I would encourage you to do any follow-up work. Uh, thanks so much.